This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. A set of column headers in the project panel refers to transcode information. I want to discuss that in a little more detail in this tutorial. So to follow along, go to the Working Files folder, Encore Project subfolder, and double click on 0306 transcode information. It opens up this project with these four folders. I'm going to talk about DVD transcode status, transcode settings, and the same thing for Blu-ray. And I've arranged those four columns here in the left-hand side. Now, your project panel probably won't look like this because it doesn't take on this kind of look based on the saved file. It takes on based on how you last worked in this project. So you probably won't see those guys there, but I'm going to have these so you can see how this looks inside this demonstration. We have four folders here, and the DVD transcode status, etc., is pretty much not applicable, or little dashes, meaning nothing's going on, because these are folders, logically. So let's open up timelines, where you think there probably would be some kind of transcode information, but there isn't. Timelines are not transcoded, per se. It's the stuff in the timelines that's transcoded. So that says NA, and for good reason. It's not really applicable to timelines. Moving on to slideshows, this is a little different, because slideshows can be videos particularly if you go over to a slideshow, let's say, and change its transition to, let's say, cross-dissolve. So now we've got cross-dissolve between every single slide. So these are little videos that play on the DVD. So they need to be turned into some kind of transcoded file. But nothing is stated here about what's going to be done with them. There's no transcode status for the slideshow. But in fact, they will be transcoded to the H.264 or MPEG file format that's appropriate for the DVD or the Blu-ray. But nothing is said, because that's done automatically. It's not really within your control. Same kind of thing applies to menus. Now, this main menu over here, which shows up over here, is an animated menu. It has a video running in the background. Yet, it says nothing about its transcode status. This, too, is done automatically. And in fact, what happens when you transcode a video that has thumbnails like this, and the thumbnails are little videos, too, is that it doesn't transcode each thumbnail separately and then the background separately. It transcodes these guys as if the thumbnail videos and this background were playing as one unit. So each frame relates to how these thumbnails are changing over time. So again, it's not like four videos here, it's just one video. Nevertheless, nothing is stated there because it's done automatically outside your control. Where you will see transcode information is under the assets. So let's just take a look at that. We've got these videos and some audio files. The top one is this motion menu that's running in the background here. So this is kind of an anomaly because we're not really putting this in a timeline. So technically, it's not going to be transcoded as a separate asset. It's going to be transcoded as part of this motion menu. So they'll have little things on top of here that will have little videos running on top. So it's going to be transcoded separately. But let's just assume that it was going to be transcoded as a timeline. This don't transcode stuff for both DVD and Blu-ray doesn't mean that it's not going to be transcoded because it's in a menu. It means that it's not going to be transcoded because it's already DVD and Blu-ray compliant. There's no reason to change this file when you put it on a DVD or a Blu-ray. That's because this file was made as an MPEG-2 file for DVD, which is upwards compatible to Blu-ray. So it'll work on both DVDs and Blu-ray. But down here is another M2V file, and it says untranscoded for DVD and automatic transcode settings for DVD, but for Blu-ray it doesn't say that. It says don't transcode. That's because this was created at a Blu-ray quality MPEG-2 file as opposed to just a DVD quality MPEG-2 file. So to have this run on a DVD, you have to have it transcoded. And it'll be done automatically using the automatic settings inside Encore, which look at your project settings and also look at how much stuff you're going to try to put on the DVD. If you're going to pack the DVD, then it'll compress it a little bit more. But you can override the automatic settings, and I'm going to talk about DVD transcoding and Blu-ray transcoding in later tutorials, but just to show you what happens if changes are made to the transcode settings and how they appear here, I'm going to right-click on the file name and go to Transcode Settings, and I can choose the settings for both DVD and Blu-ray. Now, with Blu-ray, I don't need to change it, but I'll show you what happens if I do. I'll try with the quality presets for DVD. Right now, it's automatic. But I'm going to change that to something, let's say, high quality, 8 megabits and constant bit rate, and we'll just change it to that. And I'll change the Blu-ray from MPEG-2 to H.264, just to make a difference, and change the quality preset from automatic to something that's not automatic. We'll go maximum quality. Click OK. And what happens now is that the transcode settings now show up here in these column headers because they're no longer the automatic settings. 
Let's look down here at time-lapse MOV, the QuickTime file. It's untranscoded for both DVD and Blu-ray. That's because it's a QuickTime file, an MOV file. And this would apply to AVI files as well. These need to be transcoded to MPEG-2 or H.264. And there it says untranscoded because it has to be transcoded. So I'm going to change this one to show you how that works as well. We'll just right-click here on this one and say Transcode Settings. And we'll do the same kind of thing we did before just to show you how that works. So we'll just change this one to something else. We'll make it say low quality. There we go, just to make it different. And we'll change this one back to MPEG-2. And we'll change this one over to something like high quality MPEG-2 if we're going to put it on Blu-ray. Click OK. And then those guys show up there. Now what about this little status of untranscoded? Now you usually don't transcode as you move along through your project, but you can. And the way you do that is simply by right clicking on this thing and saying transcode now and it'll transcode it, and then when it's done, it'll tell you that it's transcoded over here in this column. And if you do change your settings in the preference files to have it transcode the background, then that can transcode while you continue to work inside Encore. So that's a quick look at what these things mean and uh, what happens if you make changes and how those changes show up here inside the project panel.